Hi, I'm Jane King at the New York Stock Exchange. And with me is Anthony Anzalone, a blockchain crypto expert. And let's just, I guess, give me some background. How did you get to where you are now? And tell me what you're doing today. Yeah, absolutely. I first got started by mining Ethereum in my college dorm, getting unfortunately kicked out of my college dorm. Um, that led to buying a Banksy art piece, lighting it on fire, breaking uh, all NFT records. And then we raised about $36 million to make crypto usable. Yeah, okay. That's quite, quite a compact resume. Yeah. Right? Well, so in the Burt Banksy, kind of what you're known for, it, this was like height of NFTs. What was it, 20, what, 21? 21. Yeah, certainly height of, height of NFTs. And that's really, that's uh, social media handles, Burt Banksy. Yeah. And so where are you now? What are you doing now with crypto? So after the Burn Banksy, we realized that crypto was kind of unusable, right? Unless you really knew what you were doing, it was unusable effectively. And so we raised $36 million to try to make crypto actually usable. So building Zion, Web2 front end, Web3 back end. And the idea is proving everything on the internet. Okay. So the name of the company is Zion. And so explain what it is. Because it's kind of more like this is not consumer facing. It's more like B2B. C. B to B to C. Okay. So explain how it works. Who would be using your technology? That's right. Yeah. So who would be using it's anyone who wants to build technology that can, well, I guess, prove anything on the internet. So I'll give you an example. We work with Uber to, you know, something that we can prove is we can prove if you're a Lyft user, we can prove if you're a top Lyft user. And then we could also then prove if you are an Uber user, right? So the flow for that is we could prove if you're a top Lyft user. If you are, you'll get paid by Uber to swap directly over to Uber. And so this is like a marketing version of proving anything in the world. This works then with like airline loyalty matching, right? If you're a Delta, uh, if you're a Delta status and you want JetBlue Mosaic, you can really quickly swap that over. Uh, and the possibilities are endless. So the companies would pay for your technology. They would be able to like, I guess, mine for data that might help them get more customers. And then, and then where does it go to? How does it help the customer in the end? Well, I think it flips the dynamic from kind of predatory data mining to an opt-in kind of policy, right? So it's like saying, you know, if I'm, let's go back to the JetBlue example, if I'm a JetBlue member and I want to then be a, a Delta member, I'm going to opt in and say, hey, this is something that I want to prove, right? Rather than something that's already kind of taken for you. And it's already been shown that data is probably one of the most valuable things in the world. Absolutely. And I think we're getting to a point where users need to own their data, but they need to do it in a way that works for them, right? And I think having an opt-in as a base case needs to be the future there. So that's an interesting concept about people owning their own data. Will they be rewarded for that? Yeah, I mean, and it really depends, right? Like on the exact example, right? Let's say we build a leaderboard of top Taylor Swift users, or sorry, Taylor Swift listeners. Um, um, that's bragging rights, right? And in that has its own benefits. And then plus, that's information that people would want to use, right? Um, in the case of JetBlue or Delta or something like that, I want this upgraded membership status, or I want Uber to pay me to swap over to Lyft. And it doesn't take this weird direction of like predatory behavior. It's opt-in. And the benefit you get is up to the company. And hopefully it's enough to convince you to want to do it. Yeah, and, and interesting too, because you're right. I mean, sometimes it feels a little creepy. Yeah. Like with some of the data stuff. Yeah, like I'm saying something in your iPhone, it's just like. Absolutely, no, but they're not listening. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, we mentioned you raised $36 million. So how long ago was that? What have you done? Has that been used like to build the tech infrastructure or? What yeah. are you doing with that? Um, so in total, it was 36. Last year, um, we raised about 25 million. Okay. And all of that has been, I mean, we've scaled up the staff. We're about 30 people now. We have global reach. Uh, our main spots are America, Korea, and uh, Latin, Amer Latin America. And, you know, been able to have global expansion with that and going to take over the world. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sounds like it. So then what's next? What's next is, so we have a bunch of different verticals that we're, we're targeting, and we believe that the only real way to do that is to, you know, ideally open source uh, what we're doing, because it needs to spread and we need to have a bunch of people building on it. We're looking for the next Steve Jobs. We're looking for the entrepreneurs who can take this technology and build the next Facebook, build the next, you know, Snapchat, build the next Netflix and, and 
on this new layer of the internet that is verified and true. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And so how do you envision that happening? Like how would they, so they would build on that, this, this I guess, businesses, yeah. right? To try, so, and you have the technology infrastructure for them to do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, we want to make it simple. Like, like, I think underlying it is crypto, but notice how we haven't said the word crypto in, in a couple minutes now. Yeah. And I think that really is the future. It's, you know, the internet right now, it is a cesspool of information. And unfortunately, you know, you really can't believe what you see on the internet. For sure. Um, and so I think like where we really see that is similar to what you saw with the Twitter blue check mark. I think that's going to be around the internet, right? And you're going to say, oh, great. This is how, you know, this is real estate that someone owns. This, this is, you know, where I think StubHub rang the, the bell for the New York yeah. Stock Exchange today. And so tickets are going to be something I know that I've been, uh, you know, uh, I, I know that I've been uh, ripped off on tickets a few times and gotten fake tickets. And so being able to verify everything online is extremely, extremely important. Really interesting. And we didn't mention crypto until now. But exactly. You do have a token, right? We do have a token, yeah. Okay. How does that work into your whole ecosystem? Yeah. So in order to actually power everything in a, let's say, a GDPR compliant way and be able to have it so that we're not just saying, you know, trust us and another big corporation with a bunch of data, you know, we don't store any data. The only thing we have are proofs. So we can prove that you do something, et cetera. And the only way you can do this is a fully decentralized system that is run effectively by the world's computer. Um, and that is the old, that, is, that is what the Zion token does. It empowers everything to make sure all the wheels can move and everything just kind of works. Mm, interesting. And then just finally your thoughts on where we're headed in terms of blockchain technology, cryptocurrency. Like, yeah. How will the, and we interact with this, would you say, in 10 years? It's going to be silent. It's going to be silent. I think when we stop saying the word Web3, that's when we'll see success, right? When it's just the web. And I think that, you know, whether it's Zion being in the back end, doesn't really matter. It's going to be in the back end. It's like the internet. I shouldn't need to know how the internet works and all the intricacies in order to be able to use it. I just want to be able to use it. Yeah. Yeah. Use it, make it convenient, make your life easier exactly. and all that. And that's all that this really is at the end of the day. It's just another tool to amplify things that we can already do. Yeah. Anthony, thank you so much. Thank you, Jane. Yep.